What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to Round Ball Stew. I'm Dan Tice of Yahoo Fantasy Basketball, joined with Raphael Johnson. You guys know him well. Raph, what's going on, man? How's uh, midweek? We had to switch it up this week, but uh, how's the yeah. week coming for you? Going pretty well. A um, bit nervous. We got the Italian <laughs> Super Cup in about an hour here, so looking forward to that as soon as we get off. But yeah, um, had obviously a nine-game slate on Monday. Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, celebrate observing that, of mm-hmm. course. Um, a lot of good storylines out of that week and for the remainder of this week, too. For the remainder of the week, too. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, I just want to say, I mean, if you guys aren't watching on, if you guys are listening to the podcast, Raphael's got this dope AC Milan jersey, repping his squad hard. Usually he's got the big flag, but he had to do some rearranging last minute. So yes. um, got to rep the squad. But, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's definitely talk about some things that have happened. You know, we're obviously recording this on Wednesday now, but uh, we did have some really big games from a few different players. The first one to kick off the week, Jason Tatum went off of 51 against the Hornets on Monday. Whew. His 16th. This is the 16th 50-point performance this year. Absolutely crazy. Do you expect more of this from Tatum with Jalen Brown out of the lineup? Oh, for sure. Um they got Derek White back, and I thought he played well on Monday, which is going to help them out immensely while Brown is still sidelined. But Tatum, he, he's been outstanding. I think his efficiency on Monday was something that they caught my eye compared to what he did on Saturday. He still scored 33 in that first matchup, but the shot wasn't there. Right. That wasn't the case on Monday. So, yeah, I don't know if I, about 50, but I could see some 40s you know, coming in his future before Brown returns. Definitely. I mean, he's averaging 37 thanks to that 51 point game over yeah. the last two weeks. Um, just been absolutely outstanding. Actually, second in per game value over the last two weeks. So um, Jason Tatum has been a guy that I think preseason, you could have grabbed him, you know, anywhere in that five to, to nine range. And yeah. uh, he, he's definitely exceeding expectations right now. Um, Donovan Mitchell went down with a groin injury a couple of games ago. Um, doesn't look like he's going to give it a go tonight on Wednesday. So. Who do you think benefits? Is this back to Karis LeVert here? Um, how are you expecting this uh, distribution to be? Yeah, he's officially out for Wednesday's game. Um, so Karis LeVert's been the fill-in, whether it be Mitchell or Darius Garland sitting right. out. So I think LeVert's going to get a much-needed boost to his fantasy value because he really hasn't been a good guy off the bench in terms of fantasy. I thought he would be better than this just because getting away from both of those guys I thought would help him, but it really hasn't. Um, getting back in the starting lineup will help him. I think if you're looking deeper, maybe Chetty Osman a little bit as well, just because of his playmaking ability off the bench. But I think Levert's going to be the obvious focus here. Yeah, I agree. Um, in the five games that Mitchell's missed this season, he's averaged 18 points, five rebounds, five assists. So um, one of those games included not having Darius Garland as well. But yeah. I, I think he's definitely going to be the one to benefit the most here. And, and as you said, Yeti Osman, I think, would also be a good look. Um, if you need some scoring, some threes, and maybe an occasional steal or two, um, he's good for that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's interesting with, with uh, Karis LeVert. He's still 42% rostered in Yahoo leagues. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. He's only worth starting when one of those Darius Garland or Donovan Mitchell is out, but he's still maintaining. So if you have him, if, if he's available out there on waivers in a shallow league, definitely want to give him a look while Mitchell is out. Um, Walker Kessler, this rookie, man, it just makes this – Rudy Gobert trade look worse yeah. and worse as the weeks <laughs> go on 20 and 20 as a rookie. And um, what are you expecting from him? Do you think that, you know, with Kelly Olenek out, is this something that, is this a guy you're going to want to hold throughout the rest of the season? Or what are you, what are you doing with Walker Kessler? Cause I can see the argument for him being a sell high here too. Yeah. It's like the movie Castaway. It's like, I'm the captain now. <laughs> he He's just starting center now. Like, yeah. I don't, he can, yeah. He's not giving that job back now. Yeah. It, it'd be, because it's not like they're they're tanking while he's playing as well. Like they're actually in the thick of a playing the chase for a playing spot, and he's playing well. So it's not like you can say, "Well, we put Olenek Olenek back in there, we'll be competing more than we have been." So yeah, I think that's his job. I think for Ol- Olenek's return, I think Jared Vanderbilt's the one I'm worried about. He's still mm-hmm. rostered in over sixty percent of Yahoo leagues, which I think is too high for him. And you get Olenek back in there. Lowry Markkinen, once he's healthy, obviously. I think Vanderbilt's the one who's going to suffer the most out of this. Yeah, it's an interesting point Um, because Vanderbilt doesn't do much for scoring. He's merely just rebounds and and steals. Um, Mm -hmm. You would like to even see more blocks from him, but 
I agree with you. You know, it's usually a low end double double potential, like a six and seven with two steals or something like that. So, yeah, yeah that's an interesting point. Um, what are you doing with Kelly Olynyk? I mean, at this point, with the Utah Jazz where they are, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that he gets traded, and then that mm-hmm. that's Walker Kessler to the moon. But, yeah. um, yeah, I guess you just kind of have to ride this out with Olynyk until. Mm-hmm. He gets off the injured list and, you know, potentially maybe finds another destination here. But I find it hard to believe that he would be the backup center for the rest of the season unless they're like actually, you know, in that playoff contention, which they are right now. So maybe mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but uh, another injury, Rudy Gobert. Um, I, I got Rudy Gobert, man. And I, I we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I was like. He needs to have a 2020 game, and then you need to sell him immediately. He had that 2020 game, and I didn't (laughs) sell him, and now I regret it. So buyer's remorse here. Um, I think you got to pick up Naz Reed and um, Mm -hmm. Kyle Anderson. You know, they're both under 50% roster, but uh, what are you doing with those guys? It looks like Gobert is going to be out tonight as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Naz Reed, obviously, like you said, he's the one that you're going to want to pinpoint here. Um, Kyle Anderson will give you playmaking, so he's been pretty important even when Gobert has been healthy just because they've been without Carl Anthony Towns too. Yeah. But I think my one concern with Reed is that the recent spell of back spasms that he's had. Um, it looked like his back was kind of bothering him early in that game against the Jazz on Monday. He was ultimately able to get back out there. I think he played about 27 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, yeah, I don't think you're going to really be dealing with either Nathan Knight or Luka Garza, so it's pretty much all in on Reed at this point. Yeah, yeah, I think Nas, if he can shake that back injury, as you said, those spasms, I think he's going to be in line for a good amount of work. And he'll get you the rebounds. He can shoot the ball. He can stretch the floor. I think he's a very dynamic player. Um, interestingly enough, Kyle Anderson had a triple-double um, earlier yeah. this week, which I think was – so that playmaking ability that you just touched on is certainly what's valuable with him. Um, so, yeah, as I stated, he's 36% rostered in Yahoo leagues, and, and Nas is even less at 30%. So you might even be able to find them out in some 12-team competitive leagues there. Um, AD, we talked about it. We touched on it last week. We were saying that, you know, based on what we heard at that time, that he may not be coming back for, you know, a considerable amount of time. Shams gave an update yesterday that says that he could be returning before the all-star break. Does that change your opinion on Thomas Bryant and him being a hold now that Gabriel has started to eat into his minutes a bit more as of late? I'm going to say no. It really doesn't impact me too much that I think there's enough room for all of those guys. Like we mentioned on a previous podcast that Anthony really doesn't like to play center too much. Like, yeah. You know, he'll do it in spurts and crunch time or what have you when it has to be done, but he'd prefer not to do it. So I think for that reason, Thomas Bryant remains a hold for me. I agree. Yep. I, I agree. Um, let's talk about the Bucks. Giannis has been awfully frustrating. We touched on it a little bit where I was advocating to sell him potentially. <laughs> Um, but Chris Middleton also hasn't been the lineup. The Bucks keep rolling. You know, it's one of those teams yeah. that they get the veteran leaderships to step in there. Um, people like Pat Connington have become fantasy relevant again because of these absences of these star players. Um, but what do you expect out of the Bucks here? And, and when do you think we can expect to see at least Giannis uh, back in the lineup with his knee soreness? I think it could be Saturday. Um, their game on Tuesday against the Raptors was their second in as many days. And now they're off until Saturday. So you give him a good amount of time to continue to rest up that sore knee. I think for him, we could be looking at Saturday. Middleton, I think, is a bit further off. Um, I know he was sent to their G League affiliate for an assignment on Tuesday. Um, I don't expect to see him playing any games down there, but at least practice work, actual practices, maybe able to help him out a little bit. But I think we're looking at Saturday for Giannis, and Bobby Portis remains a hold for me, even when Giannis comes back, just because he's been a top 100 player all season. I don't think you just drop a guy like that. Yeah, I, I, I feel hard pressed to to want to drop or even trade Bobby Portis. Yeah. You know, with them getting healthy, I think it only benefits him more mm-hmm. because the Bucks are employing some kind of load management strategy here. Like Giannis is taking off games. Middleton's probably going to need some ramp up period after mm-hmm. he comes back from that G League affiliate for conditioning reasons. Um, I see a lot of opportunity here for Bobby Portis to continue to thrive. Um, are you picking up Pat Connington? Do you think it's worth it until Saturday? No, if they don't play again. Until, they don't play again until then. I don't. No, I, I just think there's a bit too much of a log jam on the wings. You know, Joe Ingles has been playing well. Grayson Allen. I yeah. think it's any of those three guys. I just think there's like not enough space for one of them to really separate themselves in fantasy. 
That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, more of a DFS streaming option mm. um, if you're looking for it. Um, let's go talk about New York a little bit. Do you think that Tibbs' lack of trust in the bench makes quickly a hold? I do. He's pretty much the only one that Tibbs is willing to play like serious minutes right now off yeah. the bench. Um, it was funny. Like he said, they were trying to work RJ Barrett back into the fold slowly. Man played 49 <laughs> out of 53 <laughs> minutes on Monday. Now, I'm I'm no mathematician, but that seems like a lot, especially for someone who's just coming back from injury with so supposed conditioning concerns. So if you're doing that, you're looking to trade Cam Reddish. We've heard that rumors are kind of intensi- yep. intensified on that front. Quickly is pretty much all they've got. You know, he, he doesn't even really trust Isaiah Hartenstein, which is kind of surprising to me, given yeah. what they spent for him in the offseason. Yeah, and Evan Fournier is not to be trusted. I know he's yeah. been – they've been trying to move that contract for quite some time. So, yeah, at this point, um, given this the, where the Knicks are in the standings, they need a wing yeah. um, and badly. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see some kind of deal for Cam Reddish, Evan Fournier – um, Miles McBride is probably the only other player on the bench that I could see getting minutes outside of Emmanuel quickly. And he's not even at quickly's yeah. level yet. So you're right. Mm-hmm. Got to hold quickly right now. Um, I know some of you might've panicked and dropped once RJ Barrett returned. Uh, no bueno. He's going to be pretty solid hold for, for the remainder of the season here. Um, cause there's not that many people that Tibbs trust much like Nick nurse and those Raptors, man, you, yeah. you can get those guys that get 40 minutes plus you're, you're looking good. Um, all right, so to close out the notable news, man, uh, before we hopped on the show, we were, there's a little bit of discussion with uh, our producer, Adam, about Nikola Jokic and the disrespect. The books have finally caught up to it. He's mm-hmm. the odds-on favorite for MVP. But looking at his stats, he's only – he's so close to averaging a triple-double, which is – he's never done it in his career. Yeah. Do you think he'll end up averaging a triple-double? He's at 9.8 assists right now, so he's on the cusp of it. I think he will. I think he's going to do enough in the assist category to get it done. Um, I think where we're also talking about, you know, MVP odds and whatnot, I just hope it's not a case of supposed voter fatigue, because in my opinion, if that's a reason to not vote for a guy, you shouldn't have a vote. Um, yeah, agreed. You know, evaluate the, the, the players on the season that they've had and, and go from there. And I think I agree with the Vegas odds. I think he'd be my favorite for MVP right now. Luca can make a really good case for him just because of the options around him in Dallas and what he's had to do on a nightly basis. Jason Tatum's in the mix too, but I really like Jokic. I think he's going to average triple double. And when you do that as a center, it's going to be really difficult to deny you MVP. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I don't know. It's this kind of the same argument that hurt LeBron for so long in his prime. Yeah. It was like, he's just too good. And like, now we're bored of someone being the greatest like that. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Like yeah. if the guy is number one in all of the advanced stats, his team is the f- best team in the Western conference and on the verge of being one of the best teams in the NBA. Like they're only two yeah. games behind the Boston Celtics here. How do you not give the award to Nikola Jokic? And, you know, similar argument for Luca take, Jokic out of that equation what do the Denver Nuggets look like we I don't know I'm mean, well I'd say the the dependency on Luka is far more than than Luka yeah. but or than Jokic but still still the same they're not going to be a good team mm-hmm. so yeah stop the hate get on the the Jokic train it's ridiculous how you know people can get bored of such great basketball and one of the best players that we're going to see definitely of our era maybe across eras um mm-hmm. All right, let's talk to talk some more scheduling stuff, man. Um, being that it's Wednesday, uh, we're not quite at the end of the week yet, so there's several teams that have three games left. Are there teams that you're avoiding uh, for the remainder of the week from sh- for streaming purposes? I think the obvious answer would be Chicago and Detroit since they only play once, and that's tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so those two, and I think – yeah, yeah, Milwaukee's only got their game on Saturday, and I yeah, think the Spurs only have one, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so those four teams you're pretty much avoiding. Beyond them, I, I think even the two team, the two game teams, I think you're pretty much going to be fine there um, yeah. because none of those teams, if I'm not mistaken, don't ha- they have any back-to-backs the rest of the week. So you should be fine with those two game teams. Okay. And um, I guess from a streaming perspective, is there any people that you're going to pick up 
you know, in the latter half of this week that you think might be uh, a help for you fantasy wise in head to head leagues? I'm going to say Toronto. Um, Chris Boucher, Pat, uh, Precious Achua. Oh, you think, came around to Chris Boucher. All right. <laughs> I've come I've come around for this week because it's a this five week game only. This, yeah. this week only. <laughs> this week, let's see what they can do. And then you go yeah. from there. You know, a yeah. five game week and they've got another back to back. I know that Nick Nurse is fine playing his main guys 40 minutes, but that's not sustainable. I don't no. think. And I think those guys, I think they can give you enough in about 20, 22 minutes where it can be worth a while to stream them. Yeah, I actually kind of like Precious Achua more than Boucher, and Boucher's mm-hmm. got more roster ship. Um, I think Achua's in at 17%, but um, he knocked down two threes, got 11 and seven in his last outing, and had a, you know, eight and eight before that. He's hit double figures in four of his last five. So, um, yeah, I think Achua's a guy that uh, certainly could be the the dude that you want to add there. Um, Grant Williams to me is, is a little bit interesting. He's put together a couple of solid lines since Jalen uh, Brown's been out. I think he's worth a look going into, if you're looking into week 15, the Boston Celtics play four games. Um, so that's uh, definitely a, a, t- a person that I would be interested in. Also, um, yeah, we already talked about the Wolves. Uh, I think that they're, they got four games heading up in week 15 as well. So if Rudy Gobert's out, you know what to do. Nasri, mm-hmm. Kyle Anderson. Um yeah, trying to find some other names here. Eric about, Gordon's uh, – oh, God. I would say, how about Dante DiVincenzo? Uh, the Warriors, three games the rest of this week. They had another back-to-back. Clay Thompson still isn't at the point where he's playing both ends of those. Nope. And Steph played Sunday and Monday. I don't know if they're going to have him play a set, both ends of a second back-to-back within a seven-day period. So I think Dante DiVincenzo may be back on people's radars for this week. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, to that, shameless plug. I'm as I did an article yesterday about buying low on Andrew Wiggins. Mm-hmm. I think that now is the time to do that because he's shooting awful from the field. And that's not something that we've seen from him at, in a warrior's uniform. Uh, yeah. I think he's been shooting uh, 42, 43%, 20% from the three point line. That was really his value was his efficiency. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this guy's got to knock off some rust. So I, I think that this is a player, a top 40 player for much of the season that you can gra- probably grab, uh, right now while he's at his lowest and before they go off, because the Warriors are always that team second half of the season, bar an injury that usually hits their stride. So uh, make sure you get in on that. But yeah, I agree with you. Dante DiVincenzo uh, stands to benefit the most if Clay Thompson's out, obviously Jordan Poole, but everyone yeah. already owns Jordan Poole. Um, yeah, those that's probably the deepest I would go on the Warriors roster. I don't know that I would go into lamb territory or um, anybody else, but yeah, um, yeah, I want to throw out another name, Eric Gordon. And the only reason I'm throwing him out, he's 10% rostered. But I think he's been auditioning for a veteran team to get traded <laughs> at some point. Like, the the guy's playing well right now. Yeah. And we talked about it um, last week with the injury to Kevin Porter Jr. That's obviously uh, given more opportunity for um, – uh, name escapes me. K.J. Martin. K.J. Martin, yeah. K.J. Martin's been looking great. Um mm-hmm. As well as uh, Jay Sean Tate's also been getting some more minutes, but Eric Gordon has still been starting, and he's putting up good numbers. So, like, I, you know, I think with the Houston Rockets playing, I believe they have two games left. Two games yep, left. Two more. Yep. Yeah, and then they have a, I believe they have a nice little four game week coming up next next week. Uh, let me double check that. Uh, they have three, but uh, one's on Monday. So, yep, give Eric Gordon a look. They're just going to audition him to get traded. So you might get some cheap production there, get some threes, some steals, and some points. Um, anybody else that uh, comes to mind for you to close out this week or heading into next one? No, so we already mentioned Karis LeVert. Uh, I yeah. think he'd, he'd be an obvious one. But, yeah, I think we pretty much hit on everyone that I would say right now. Cool. All right, let's go. Uh, let's get into some buying, selling, and uh, holding – Got some good names on this one and a couple of, uh, I don't know, man. We're, we're going with all big men today. So uh, mm-hmm. first one I want to talk about is Nikola Vucevic. Sixth in nine cat leagues over the last week. 23 for the season. Buying or selling Mr. Vucevic? This is going to sound crazy given what he did against the Warriors. Um, I'm going to say sell. And the reason why is that DeMar DeRozan is likely to return on Thursday. Um, 
I think his absence kind of gave Vooch a boost in terms of they couldn't really ignore him in their offensive sets as they tend to do at times when DeRozan and Zach Levine are out there. So that would be my one reason to sell high on him, just see what you can get. But yeah, that's probably going to sound crazy to a lot of people. I'll be honest with you on that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm a hold Vucevic, but I understand the argument, especially because DeMar DeRozan's coming back. Zach Levine's another person that's probably you're going to see his. I mean, he was providing uh, what third, fourth round value over the last yeah. couple of weeks or the last several of games over the last week because of DeMar DeRozan's absence. So I think they're all going to be impacted by that. So I think it makes sense. We're not going to see those as crazy of lines that we've seen from mm-hmm. Husevich. So I think you could probably get, I don't know, a top 50, 40, 30 player. I don't know. Would you go as far as like an Evan Mobley? Ooh. I don't know if I'd go that far. Not that far. I think, okay. Yeah, I think I'd be a little greedier than that. Not that any, there's anything wrong with Mobley, but I think I'd aim a little higher in okay. terms of value for Vooch. Makes sense. And uh, Walker Kessler, 12th over the last week, 104 for the season. We know, I mean, you gave a pretty compelling argument for holding this man, so I'm guessing you're not going to be selling Walker Kessler. All in. All in. <laughs> Pushing the chips in the middle yep. of the table. All in. If I can buy him, I'm going to buy him. Because I think he, what you said 104 for the season. I think he's going to be safe for you within the top 100 by season's end. Um, you're not expecting 21 rebounds or 20, 20 points, 21 rebounds. But the blocks are going to be there. And that's a huge commodity in fantasy, especially in those, those category leagues. So I, I'm all in on Walker Kessler. How high? Uh, so, what, who do you think is a player that would be comparable to to acquire Mister Kessler? Oh man, I think Mobley would probably be a bit much. Um, but I think if you can get someone in that, if you can, you may have to give up someone like that the top seventy five range to get him, if not a little higher. But I think it's well worth the risk personally because he's like not a, a shut. Would you go like a DeAndre Ayton or too much? I would. Uh, let's be honest. We saw what the Suns put on that court Monday evening. Dude, hot garbage. Sorry for all, anyone that I recommended, Dwayne yeah. Washington Jr. He didn't even get any minutes. Like Landry yeah. Shamit's now the point guard. They're a hot mess. Yeah, I, I didn't like it at all. Um, and it's one thing where you just, if you were to just lose Devin Booker, then Aiden, you would think he'd have increased value just because you have a credible point guard out there. Right. No Chris Paul, too. I think that's really tough. So I think if if someone if you had to give up Aiton for Kessler, I think I would do it personally. I think that that's a fair argument. I'll be honest, man. I I might even throw Gobert in there, and, and I don't even know if that's mm. even going to get it. I, like yeah. I, I, people might value Walker Kessler more than than Rudy Gobert now in his current mm. state of affairs. But yeah, maybe I'm just a bitter Gobert manager <laughs> right now. <laughs> I just I got to get something because I think the the other thing I think we touched on it before was like. With Gobert, you want the rebounds category, you own that. Field goal percentage, you own that. And blocks, you should own. Mm-hmm. He is not a blocker. This yeah. Year. So if he doesn't have that, like, mm, I'll, I'll take Walker Kessler, man, who's got those spike games of, you know, five, six, looking like Brooke Lopez and Jaron Jackson mm-hmm. Jr. out here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and shout out to Jaron Jackson Jr., man. Another six block game in like one quarter. Just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Um, Alperen Singoon. 33rd over the last week, and he dropped a career high 33 points yeah. a couple of games ago with 15 boards, four blocks, two threes, six dimes. Just a that was the Singoon game everyone's mm-hmm. been waiting for. If you roster him, he's 71st for the season after that big game. What are you doing with him? Are you buying, selling, holding? If I have him, I'm holding. Um, the one reason why I would kind of hesitate a bit on buying is that I don't trust them to continue to play through Shingun, especially once Kevin Porter Jr. comes back. Because, look, man, I know we're all experts when we're sitting on our couch, but it's like <laughs> you watch your guards turn the ball over four or five times per game. Meanwhile, you have this center who you can play through on the post and in the mid-range. We've seen some perimeter shooting from him in terms of his improvement. Yeah, it just feels like he's going to continue to be underused by that team until next season. I sincerely hope not, but that would be my one reason 
for not wanting to buy Shingun because his talent is incredible. He's become a poor man's Jokic or Demonis Sabonis, and it yeah. seems like Steven Silas has yet to realize it. And yeah. you're right. His hand was forced because Kevin Porter Jr. is out. But, you know, watching John Wall's uh, podcast the other day about how he was telling Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green not to get used to this because this is not how the NBA works when you're yeah. on a good team. There's just a lot of bad habits out there. Bad mm -hmm. shots, not moving the ball. As you said, experts, couch experts, armchair quarterbacks over here. We're watching the game and it's like, yo, this yeah. is so obvious. This team's chemistry the, the flow of the game, the offense just runs better through Singoon. So, I don't know. I, I, I get you. Um, and, you know, it's crazy because Silas has also tried to give the backups so much time. And it's like, yeah. I don't, why, do we, why is this guy not getting 30 minutes a night? And he's mm -hmm. you see what he can do when he does. So, yeah, I, I think that's the only caution that I would have is like, I don't know if Silas is going to go back to his mysterious rotations and benchings and not giving Shingun the minutes that he rightfully so should, should get. Yeah. Um, so that would be my hesitancy, but yeah, I did get a couple offers in a couple of my competitive leagues. Someone offered me Deandre Ayton for him. I was like, hard pass. Good on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I would be, I'm kind of interested Walker Kessler. Mm -hmm. Shingun would be kind of interesting. Um, but I think that there's just more scoring opportunity yeah. with, uh, with Shingun there that I wouldn't want to miss out on. But um yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely holding Shingun. I don't I'm not really looking to sell unless I can get like you know like a top you know easily top fifty top forty type player in exchange for mm -hmm. him. Um, but he really does a lot, so it's great to see him finally have that breakout true breakout game that we've yeah. been expecting and wanting to see. Um, any other players that you have any uh, any any heartburn of buying selling uh, in week fourteen? Man, I know you mentioned Grant Williams. I, I like him. Um... That Phoenix point guard situation, it's really hard to make sense of it. Um, Landry Shamit never really been like a true point guard. So, but you got six dimes, but like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's, He's, I just, I, I feel like you got to stay away from that situation. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't, I don't know. Dwayne Washington could be back in the rotation. Maybe Mikel Bridges takes, I don't know. I don't know what, are the Suns going to blow it up? I think is a, is a question that's, that's probably coming up pretty, yeah. pretty soon. Like, they're, they're trending the wrong direction and nobody's on the court that, that can actually help them win. So mm -hmm. uh, January 15th has now passed. Aiton can be traded. Um, I don't know, man. This this has some bad juju going on in Phoenix, man. I just don't know what where this is going. I think Dallas could be worth watching too. Um, you've got Dorian Finney-Smith and Josh Green expected to be back this week. Um, Finney-Smith is 22% rostered in Yahoo Leagues. So I think you know, once he gets gets going, that full workload, he's someone that I think would be worth rostering just because of the defensive stats and some of the other things that you can get from a player of his caliber. And they've also got three more games this week. I don't expect him to play in all three, but it might be a good idea to kind of get ahead of the curve and, and grab him now if he can. That's fair. Yeah, and I think that the, the defense, especially with Dorian Finney-Smith and, and uh, Josh Green back in the lineup, that's really going to help – the Mavs, like those are solid rotational role players that they've, they've been sorely been missing uh, yeah. defensively and DFS, you know, he's, he hasn't been shooting from the three as well this year, but you know, maybe this time off, you know, knock off some of that rust. He'll, he'll come back and uh, be a, be a staple for them. And um, I don't know. I think there's, I was listening to a podcast. It sounds like Tim Hardaway jr. Is like their only tradable asset right now uh, just mm -hmm. due to his contract. So I'd be curious to see if they, if they make any moves at the deadline to kind of bolster that, that perimeter defense. Cause, yeah. That's not one thing that Tim Hardaway does. Tim Hardaway doesn't really, doesn't really know for his defense. Mm -hmm. um, and one other thought I just had: uh, the Portland Trailblazers are, are right now sitting outside of the playing tournament. They are number ele they're ranked eleventh in the Western Conference right now. Damian Lillard went off. What's he have? Six straight thirty point performances. Two straight of forty plus. Yeah. Are they in the this weird territory of what? What? What do you do? You know, is it? I mean, I don't know who they could trade really because they, you know, maybe Jeremy yeah. Green or Jeremy Grant. I think his contract's looking pretty attractive. Maybe the Knicks, mm -hmm. that's like a perimeter player that I think could help them a lot. Um, but yeah, I, a guy asked me on Twitter, would he trade Damian Lillard for LeBron James in a points league? And I was like, I think so. Like Damian Lillard's going through this huge scoring explosion right now. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Rest of the season, I kind of feel like LeBron is uh, looking like a good bet, especially with the Lakers about to get healthier. 
Yeah, I can see that. I think Portland, I don't see them being sellers. I think they're going to try to go all in. Figure it on out. This, even though, yeah, because you, you don't pick up a Jeremy Grant in addition to Lillard and, and Simons and Nurkic and, d- and just decide that you're going to shut it down for the rest of the season. So I think they're going to try to figure it out. Whether or not they can, we'll see. But, yeah, I, I think they're going to keep trying to go full speed ahead here. That's going to be an interesting battle of the West, man. Lakers 13th, Suns 12th, and the Portland Trailblazers 11th, all separated by a game and a half. So, mm-hmm. man, it's crazy looking at those, you know, on paper, great teams just sitting at the bottom yeah. of the barrel of the Western Conference. Um, all right, that'll do it for Round Ball Stew. Make sure you uh, check out all of Raf's work on NBC Sports Edge, R- Roto World. Find all my work um, at Yahoo Sports. Check our Twitter. Make sure you hit us, DM us, send us your thoughts and questions as you're kind of going through your start sit decisions or any wavered um, co- conflicts that you have that you want to work through. We'll see you next week, next Wednesday here at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you next time. Peace.